Every council is required to assess the needs of the travelling communities. But many travellers believe there are not enough sites provided, so want to build their own. With locals objecting, up to 90% of planning requests by travellers are turned down, so they often buy land, build without permission and live there illegally. Dale Farm is Europe's largest site, home to more than a thousand travellers. But although they own the land, they don't have planning permission to build on it. But seven and a half years we've been here, fighting our court cases with five years, lost everything, and now they said they just want us out. They're going to bring in the big machinery, the big bailiffs, and they're just going to smash everything, all these bricks, everything that you can see here. The ones the bailiffs just to destroy that and leave us homeless. After seven years, we put up a hard fight and just, they won't listen to us. They don't want to know you say, because we're travellers and they don't want us here. They don't want us off. Tomorrow, Margaret's daughter, six-year-old Mary Ann, will take her first Holy no. Communion. No. It's an excuse for the women to organise one last party on the site. See this, this is our too far, you see. Look at all oh, she's split. <laughs> No, what's wrong? We need to shove these bars in yeah. like that. So how special is this party? This party is very special because it's going to be the last party we'll ever have in Del Farm. We'll be on the road, I imagine, after this. We might have a party on the side of a motorway next time you see us. In some car park. <laughs> Nobody knows when the eviction of Dale Farm will begin, and Mary Ann and her cousins are waiting anxiously for the council to deliver the news. You have to get this letter, it's called a 28 day notice, and no one out by that 20 days, 28 days, sorry. Yeah, he, a lot of bulldozers comes in and uh, he digs up all the tarmac and knocks down all the walls, and um, it burns all the chalets. Oh, I'm shocked. She only know about it now. <laughs> she only found out oh, now. That don't happen. If we do, like, no, if everything to burn down, we're gonna. We have to live inside this road. We're gonna have to live in the side of the, ro side of the road. <laughs> Dressmaker Thelma has turned electrician to put the finishing touches to her illuminated masterpiece. We're really not sure if it is safe. It does say on the packet the safe, but you just never know, do you? Look at Michael Jackson. He had everyone looking after him. Anything can go on fire, can't they? So you've got to be very careful. They were fireworks. Well, just like this. this could turn into fireworks. <laughs> How much does something like this cost? How much do you earn, Daniel? Oh, I can't tell you that. Well, there you go. Tip for tat, Daniel. I couldn't tell you that. It's uh, customer confidentiality. I would be ostracised completely if I told you that. Nobody would ever trust me again. 17-year-old non-traveller Sam has come with her mum, Linda, and sister Tiffany to see her wedding dress for the very first time. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's moving. How many of the skirts has this got under it? 21 you've got. Is that the most anyone's ever had? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to look that nice. Like, I was expecting it to look nice because Velma made it, but I wasn't expecting it to look as nice as what it looks now, why like it's all come together. What's he going to think of the, when he sees the lights? He doesn't know about the lights. No, right? nobody knows about the lights except for my mum. Nobody knows about the lights. And so you better keep it still. Hey, come on, Sam, let's try your dress on. It's the minute you've been waiting for, isn't it? Peek in there. Oh, my son. 
I am buzzing. I just can't wait to see her in the dress, walking out the house, if she can fit through the door, <laughs> and get in to the church. You excited for her? Yeah. A lot of mums would be worried by their daughters marrying a gypsy, wouldn't they? I don't know, same as anything else, isn't it? Some might disapprove, I'm made up for her. She knows what she wants, she's happy with Pat. Both me and her dad, as far as I know her dad is, happy for her to be with him. We both like him, so no qualms there whatsoever. Can we come in? Mum. Sam, it's gorgeous! Oh. You can't hug it, you can't get near it. <laughs> Sam, it's beautiful. It's lovely. Can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely good. Never seen one as stunning in my life, I've really not. Absolutely amazing. Cheers. Oh. Nice one. We were relieved that all the, the lights worked, but I am still a bit worried about the fire issue, so we've decided we will take a little fire extinguisher with us just in case. Yeah, that's, it. That's, what, <laughs> that's what we want, loads of dancing. You know, all that combustion, it could just go up, wouldn't it, in a ball of flames. Dressmaker Thelma is on her way to a wedding where two very different communities are about to come face to face. We're all looking forward to going to this one because this is just going to be completely different. Nothing we've ever been to before would be like this one. I know by speaking to the travellers, you know, they say they've got nothing against obviously non-travellers, but what they say is that they don't think anyone that isn't brought up as a traveller could live a traveller life because it is hard, it's strict and they'll never ever be accepted as a traveller just because they marry into the family. They might be accepted and liked by the parents of the boy or the girl, whoever it is, but they'll never actually be known as a traveller. It's food about the... It's all supposed to be dressed in me. I'm not supposed to be dressed in everyone else. In a nearby hotel, Groom Pat is preparing for his big day, along with his page boy, his five-year-old cousin, Ricardo. Well, you're awfully quiet, not like you. Yeah. 